Hey, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, this time around, we're going to talk about IP helper addresses. Um, so in a LAN environment, um, it's most commonly used for a DHCP request. So if I'm a client on a subnet and I, I request a DHCP address, that goes out of my machine as a broadcast. Those broadcasts, of course, don't cross a router interface. So as long as the DHCP server is in my local subnet, then it will, it will give me an offer packet. I accept it. I take that address and, and we move on. However, uh, if you have a lot of subnets in your environment, you know, it doesn't make sense to deploy a DHCP server on each and every subnet. Instead, we deploy one DHCP server or maybe two for your environment um, and then um, and then create scopes on that DHCP server, and each scope is a subnet. So what the IP helper address does is when that broadcast gets received by the router, the router takes that broadcast, turns it into a unicast, and forwards it on to that DHCP server, and as it forwards it, it stamps the packet with its own address, with, its, with, its, uh, with what subnet it, the DHCP server should give the address from. So the DHCP server then looks, do I have a scope in that subnet? Yes, I do. And then it sends out an offer packet, which then the router will receive that unicast and then send it off to the original client. So pretty straightforward. IP helpers can be used for many other things as well, not just DHCP. So you can forward pretty much any type of UDP broadcast. You can um, you can configure. There's several on by default. So if I just turn on IP helper, it's going to forward you know DHCP requests, boot P requests, uh, DNS broadcasts, TFTP broadcasts, and a few others, um, uh, NTP broadcasts, and you can. Uh, disable any of those if you like or you can actually um, add more so if you wanted to forward you know UDP port number 1080 you could do that you could configure that if you wanted to but for the most part we just turn on the the IP helper so let's have a look at how we do that so um, we can do that either on a physical interface or more commonly almost always on a VE uh, which a VE is an IP address assigned to a VLAN um, and so uh, let's have a look at our running config here first. So show run interface VE1. So VE1 here has two addresses on it. It has a 10.0.0.1, so, so 10.0.0.0 slash 24 subnet, and a 192.168.1 subnet. And so what I want to do is I want to add a helper to this subnet and have it forward to a DHCP server that's on a completely different subnet on a different VE. So I will have one... Um, or more two, etc. DHCP servers for redundancy, uh, and have it forward those broadcasts into unicast. So uh, the way we do that, we'll go config t, and then interface ve ve1, and then we're just going to add an IP helper dash address. And so the next thing it's going to ask me for a number. So the number is you can have up to 16 IP helper addresses per interface, um, and so what's going to happen is we assign a number here from 1 to 16 and it will simultaneously send that to all of those DHCP. So, so in theory, if I had 16 DHCP servers, I could set up 16 IP helpers and have it forward that, that um, request to all 16 of those servers at exactly the same time. So they're not used in series. It doesn't wait for one to time out and move on. It'll send it to all of those devices and then whoever's the first one to send an offer packet to that client, it'll act that um, and the rest of them will just put their address back into the pool. So we do an IP, uh, IP helper address one and then we're just going to specify the address of our uh, DHCP server. So 11.0.0.100 and hit enter. Uh, so then, you know, maybe I've got a second Maybe I've got a second DHCP server in that same subnet. It's 101. So now what happens is when a client on um, on this on my VE on one of those subnets on the VE sends a broadcast DHCP request, uh, it's going to simultaneously send it to 11.0.0.100 and 11.0.0.101. Uh, to get a, a packet and it's going to stamp it with the subnet that it came from as it passes through. Now one thing to note here because I have two different subnets on this interface it doesn't know 
where that client belongs, right? It doesn't know that my PC should be on 10.0.0.0/24 or 192.168.1 subnet, so it will stamp it with the lowest numbered IP on the interface by default if you have more than one. So the way we fix that is, let's say I wanted it, I want my clients to be on the 192.168 address. Well, it's not the lowest address, so it's never going to do that. So in order to make that happen, there's a ipbp-gateway command. Right? And then I specify where I want it to come from. So 192.168.1.77. So now those, those packets, as they pass through, as they get turned from broadcast into unicast, are going to get stamped with that 192.168.1 subnet. And so therefore, it'll take it out of that scope and give me addresses in that subnet. So it's, it's not that common to have multiple uh, subnets on an interface. So it's not something you usually have to worry about. But in, in the event that you do, um, that's how you solve the problem and tell it which source address to come from. Um, but otherwise, that's about it for, for IP Helper. So pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, hope you get something. Thanks very much. Tune in next time.